Hello, my friends. My name is Ryan Freeman. You are watching Poetry in the Park. I have the great giant book of poetry. I am reading a poem by Robert Burns, the famous Scotsman. He was voted 2009 to be the greatest Scotsman by the Scottish public. Um, he was a poet that died tragically at the age of 37 in the latter half of the 1700s. So a long time ago, very influential on the Romantic movement. And I just stumbled upon this poem today. The name is Inconstancy in Love. Inconstancy meaning not constant. Usually uh, you're trying to say that someone is fickle, that not someone is not steadfast, someone you cannot rely on. So inconstancy in love. Someone who doesn't love you all the time. Two short stanzas. I will read them and then discuss. It starts out. Let not woman e'er complain of inconstancy in love. Let not woman e'er complain. Fickle man is apt to rove. Look abroad through nature's range. Nature's mighty law is change. Ladies, would it not seem strange? Man should then a monster prove. Mark the winds and mark the skies. Oceans ebb and oceans flow. Sun and moon but set to rise. Round and round the seasons go. Why then ask of silly man to oppose great nature's plan? We'll be constant while we can. You can be no more, you know. So, um, he was a Scotsman, uh, as I said, perhaps the greatest Scotsman to ever live, according to the Scottish public, in 2009. Deeply an influential poet. Um, I don't know how the Scottish pronunciation of those words would go. It might rhyme a little bit more. Um, but I'm not going to try to do that too much. Um, but I want to talk about what it means. Now, I think this might be a very unpopular poem for some people who believe in the Disney romance of a monogamous, faithful love, a love that never stops, no matter how many years, no matter how many decades, a person who always loves you without any moments of doubt, right? We have this desire for people to love us forever. But is that possible? Is that within our natural capacity as men, or perhaps we could even extend this to women, but I will speak for the men. Um, it's not easy to love one woman your whole life and never to love another woman. Um, but we're going to talk about that as we go along. So let's go back to that first stanza. Let not woman e'er complain of inconstancy in love. So let not woman, so all women air complain. I love that air instead of ever air. So beautiful. Old English is charming today. So women should never complain. What of? Of inconstancy in love. So don't complain that your man doesn't always love you. That your man's love is not eternal. Let not woman air complain fickle man is apt to rove. So, I think rove might might rhyme with love in the Scottish pronunciation. Love, rove, I don't know. Bad Scottish accent, right? So, don't complain about inconstancy in love. And don't complain. Fickle man is apt to rove. What does it mean to be fickle? Fickle means not steadfast, inconstant liable to change. What does he say about man? Man is fickle and is apt, meaning likely to rove, to move, to look around, right? He's, man is not just someone built to just stay in one place. Man's nature is to move. Man's nature is to rove. Love that word. Look abroad through nature's range. Nature's mighty law is change. So he he starts off with that hard-hitting thing. Women, don't you ever complain that man is fickle and he's apt to rove and maybe he's in constant love. And this is the reason why. 
when you look abroad through nature's range, so we're talking about looking at the wide variety within nature, trying to deduce what is nature's law. Nature's mighty law is change. Ladies, would it not seem strange? Man should then a monster prove? Now this part uh, is the only part of the poem that I'm not exactly sure what he means by monster. Does he mean that because women might think man is a monster if he's in constant in love, that he doesn't love her eternally like in some Disney movie? That that's not strange? Or is it that by trying to force a man to be constant in love, which is against nature's law, nature's mighty law was change, that you turn man into a monster? I think you could see it either way, and I'm not sure. Write it down in the comments what your opinion is. And the second stanza. Talking more about nature. Trying to drill this in to women who have these unnatural expectations of men. So here we go. Here we go, ladies. If you're not, if you're not sold on this idea yet, that man's nature is to rove, and that he is by nature inconstant in love. Mark the winds and mark the skies. Oceans ebb and oceans flow. Sun and moon but set to rise. Round and round the seasons go. So we're talking about the range of nature. We're talking about mark the winds. Mark means look, pay attention. Mark the winds, like the wind right now is blowing right now. When I started this video, it wasn't blowing. The wind changes. The wind is not constant. Mark the skies. When you look up at the sky, it might look different than it did yesterday or last week or last month. The sky is changing. Oceans ebb and oceans flow. The ocean ebbs. That's when the water moves away from the coast. When the tide goes out and the flow, the ocean is always moving. The ocean is never, the ocean is inconstant. Sun and moon but set to rise. Is the sun constant? No. Every time you look up, the sun's in a different position. Same thing with the moon. Round and round the seasons go. Our seasons are constantly changing. Round and round, always moving. So then, if this is nature's mighty law of change, which he's given great examples from the range of nature, why then ask of silly man to oppose great nature's plan? If nature's great law is change, the oceans ebb, the oceans flow, round and round the seasons go, why then ask of silly man to oppose great nature's plan? We'll be constant while we can. You can be no more, you know. So man will try to be constant, but as he is part of nature, he cannot be expected to oppose great nature's plan. You can be no more than yourself. And I think when you are more than yourself, then that's when you become a monster. And I think that civilization and our society has these expectations for permanence. We want everything to be permanent, whether it's our countries, our laws, our establishments, religions don't want to change. Ideas don't want to change. Even science, which is built upon challenging and overturning hypotheses, scientists don't want their theories to change. I mean, we, no one, we all want things to stay the same. We want families to stay the same. We want our kids to stay at the same age. We don't want our dogs to die. We don't want, we don't want to change. And when it comes to love, which is the most important thing for most of us, or the thing that gives us true fulfillment, um, and it shatters us when we lose our love. So of course we want constancy in love. We don't want the people that love us to stop loving us. We don't want we don't want that heartbreak. We, we, our heartbreak comes from, from trying to hold on to that love and keeping it constant. But the problem is, is that nature's great law is change. Everything is changing. The greatest philosophers, whether you go to the Greeks or the Chinese, or anyone else who pays attention to life and the world and nature and all of it, is that everything is changing. Everything is flowing. Saith Heraclitus, the old Chinese book, the book of changes. 
I mean, everything is constantly flowing and changing when you look in nature and when you look even in our own hearts and emotions. Um, so, woman ne'er com e so let not woman e'er complain of inconstancy in love. Let not woman e'er complain. Fickle man is after oath. How many women divorce their husband because he doesn't love me like he used to be? He like he used to. This whole idea that your husband is going to love you the same as he did when he married you? Your husband's changing. You're changing. Your relationship is dynamic. And this uh, brings up the idea of what is marriage? What is a relationship? Is it only based on love? On, on this fickle emotion that does change? Well, you know, originally marriage wasn't based on love. Marriage... Some marriages might have always been based on love, but marriage was primarily a contract. We're going to keep our families together. We're going to till this land together. We're going to raise our children together. It wasn't, didn't have to be based on love. It was built on a commitment towards something greater, something that could last, family, alliances. The whole idea of love coming in uh, through the troubadours in the south of France, of courtly love, that was something different. And our culture in the West uh, has latched on to it. And I'm not surprised we have so much divorce today with this idea that my wife or my husband's going to love me forever. No, no, no. I will be committed to you forever, to raising this family, to the alliance that we've made. But a constancy in love? My, nothing is constant. My hair is getting wider than it was. I'm getting older. The oceans, the lakes, the wind, everything is flowing. Why wouldn't our emotions change as well? So um, Robert Burns, one of the greatest, if not the greatest Scotsman, who wrote many poems, many songs, died at uh, the tragic early age of 37, but has left a massive legacy that has inspired so many poets, reminds us Stop complaining about nature. And when you're complaining that, that men aren't constant in love, why do they want to rove? Why are they apt? Why are they fickle sometimes? And maybe this extends to women. Probably a lot of men complain. I know I've been heartbroken as well when women stop loving me. So it's a reminder to all of us that let's not be monsters. Let's not oppose great nature's plan. And let's accept us for who we are as part of nature, as fickle as we are, we will try to be constant while we can. You can be no more, you know. That was In Constantly in Love by Robert Burns, born in 1759, died in 1796, had a very interesting life and an interesting legacy. My name is Ryan. Thank you for joining me in Poetry in the Park. I will see you next time. Bye-bye.